Welcome back to Psychology of the Unknown, where we talk about true crime, serial killers, the paranormal, and psychology. So if that's the kind of stuff you're into, then make sure you stab the subscribe button and burn the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. Also, make sure you give this video a like and leave your manifesto in the comments below. Today, I'll be telling you the story of Hell's Hollow. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Growing up in Decatur, Illinois, I've heard all the legends. Decatur's resident author Troy Taylor made a career out of retelling those legends on a public stage through his Haunted Decatur, Haunted Illinois, and Haunted America books, and has even gone as far as to offer haunted tours of the area, and can often be seen on many of the Travel Channel, History Channel, and Discovery Channel's paranormal shows. Many wholeheartedly believe these legends to be true. Legends like the hauntings at the Lincoln Theater, the Avon Theater, and the ghostly presences at Greenwood Cemetery. A long-standing belief is that Decatur was built on a Native American burial ground. Over the years, others have added to the legends, such as the time a heavy rain caused Greenwood Cemetery to flood and the water forced bodies of the long dead out of the ground. Then there are those legends of the catacombs under the city, which extend from under Greenwood Cemetery to the northeast under the downtown area. Of these legends, the most prominent is that of Hell's Hollow. There have been stories about this place for as long as I can remember. Stories which some have pulled from other legends and attached to the wooded area behind Greenwood Cemetery. Some stories which others claim to have witnessed and some that were completely fabricated. In my own experience with the hollow, I've walked the path which leads behind the cemetery many times with friends. It's black, more than pitch black. It's an area where no light enters at night. The path is almost a mile long, and unless you have a flashlight or lantern, you won't be able to see a foot in front of you. There are no street lights along the path, and the only illumination is from the few houses which sit atop a hill to the north and the distant lights at the end of the path for the water treatment building. What's even eerier than the lack of light is the lack of sound as well. It's almost as if you're in a sound booth. There are woods on either side of the paved path, which means there should be sounds of animals and trees, but there's nothing. Not a creak or chirp. Not a rustling of leaves or branches swaying in the wind. During my time as a paranormal investigator, my team and I investigated the area many times. We took pictures, recorded audio, everything an investigation entailed. The closest thing I've ever attained was a single photo that when turned on its side looks like two spirits, a male and a female, in a loving embrace with what appears to be something of a demonic face within the lower portion of the photo looking up at the two. This of course can be discounted as simply mist and fog, as it was a drizzly night where the ground was warm but the air was cool. One of the legends which has been attributed to this place is that of a blizzard during the 1800s, which resulted in a few residents who lived atop the hill getting snowed in for weeks unable to make it into the town. The family had to survive by eating tree bark soup, they would strip the bark off the surrounding trees and boil it in pots of water to eat. After a few weeks of this, the tree bark soup wasn't cutting it. Eventually, family members began dying off from the starvation and cold. Those who still lived would store the dead in the snow until they were able to hold funerals when the ground was thawed. However, the survivors weren't going to make it unless they took extreme action. This action was the same way in which the Donner Party survived. They had to eat the flesh of their dead. This, of course, is just the first of many legends that got tied into Hell's Hollow over the years, and there's no record of it actually happening that I've been able to find. The second legend was that of the Hounds, which goes like this. In 1936, a reporter from Chicago traveled to Decatur, which by today's standard is three hours south by car, in order to investigate some mysteriously unsolved murders in the area. The reporter posed as a G-man and discovered a terror cult operating in the area by Greenwood, known as Hell's Hollow. The terror cult known as the Hounds were credited with the murder of eight men, women, and children, while others who weren't killed had been flogged and tortured. The Hounds were also responsible for the desecration of bodies which were buried in the cemetery. The group was composed of bandits, 
Chicago organized crime members, serial killers, rapists, politicians, and dirty cops. When the hounds would ransack the graves, they would pull the gold teeth from the corpses, along with any jewelry and anything else of value. Their leader was said to be the cemetery's grave digger. The legend grew over the years to include human flesh being stretched over ceremonial drums, which were beat with human thigh bones during human sacrifice ceremonies. The hollow had become a dumping ground for bodies victimized by the gang. And to this day, if you go walking through it at the stroke of midnight, you can hear the screams of the ones slaughtered and the beating of the ceremonial drums. The original story of a gang of bandits known as the Hounds who raped and murdered people in the hollow during the 1930s was completely fabricated by William Randolph Hearst to increase circulation during the Chicago newspaper wars of 1936. Included in the hoax was Chicago Herald and Examiner reporter Roby Parks and Sullivan farmhand John Barker. The story was unveiled in the Chicago newspaper on September 13, 1936. It was then added to the Decatur newspaper, and so the legend began with people adding to their area's reputation with each retelling. There is no evidence that Decatur was ever built atop a Native American burial ground. In fact, the Illiniwek Indians generally stayed along the Illinois River, which connects to the mighty Mississippi. The Illinois Indians were nomadic and traveled along this river. To think they had a single location in which they would bury their dead doesn't really make sense, as they would have to travel for days in a time when portable refrigeration units didn't exist. The Native Americans treated their dead as sacred. To allow them to decompose while traveling to a burial site would be unheard of. In fact, many of the Illinois Indians actually placed their dead in split logs, which acted as makeshift caskets, which rested in forks of trees some 10 to 15 feet above the ground. These remained in this position until about the year 1836, when they were removed by the settlers and buried in the earth. Decatur is listed as one of the most haunted places in the world. But just because legends are repeated enough does not make them true. And legends like these get repeated constantly.